today we're comparing pink fairy woods from the past 20 years. We've got five models here, and we've got Jackie to hit some shots. We're gonna see what TrackMan tells us. And golfers, if you haven't yet, subscribe to the YouTube channel for a bunch more comparisons like this in the future. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahol the Second Swing Golf. Today I'm joined by Jackie Johnson, Master Club Fitter here at Second Swing Minnetonka. Today we're in the tour van, and we've got five Ping Ferry Woods. Um, because of our huge selection of clubs, we've, we've been able to go back 20 years in Ping Ferry Woods. We've got a G5, and also we've got the brand new G425, and then three models in between there. And we're gonna just test and see what TrackMan tells us about Ping Ferry Woods over the years. So Jackie, you're familiar with Ping Ferry Woods. You're familiar with Ping the brand. Um, what do you think, well, what have you seen from Ping over the years, and what do you think we'll see in the test today? Yeah, I mean, Ping has always been known for their forgiveness. Uh, there's no secret to that. Right. So I think, you know, there's going to be, the dispersion circles will definitely be tight. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, I think from, you know, the G5 all the way up to the G425, going to be some huge difference in ball speed. Uh, I remember when my dad had the G5, and mm -hmm. so it'll be fun to just hit it and kind of see what it felt like compared to right. what, the what he was range. playing back yeah. in the day. Yeah. yeah, it's certainly different. I mean, you can just look right now and look at the how the head is shaped, and it's just totally different. So um, we've got kind of the regular flex stock shafts which, yep. with each of them, and this is 15 degree three woods, I believe. Ping's uh, G425 might be 14 and a half. Uh, 14 and a half to 15. 15, yep. so they've a little bit of variation there, but regardless, we've got three woods to test today. Regular flex stock shafts. Jackie, you ready to hit some shots here today? Yeah, let's go. This grip is like very slippery, but that'll do. That's good. All right. So, uh, Jackie, that was the G5. Yep. I didn't. This, I'm trying to talk sound here. The sound was. It didn't. It didn't even sound hardly like a metal club. It was. It sounded like it was just a thud. It yeah. wasn't really. There was no echo or anything like that to it. So that brought me back to some old time golf there, where it was just. You hit that tee shot and it's nothing echoey or brashy. It's just a thud. Yeah, the newer technology in ping is definitely going to sound a lot different. Yes. But yes, yeah, it, it didn't sound like a ping. No. And that's the first thing I noticed too. Um, but overall, the results, not bad. Uh, so fairly straight. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think I'm curious. It seemed like you were launching it pretty low. Yeah, 11.4. Yeah. I wonder if you add some, you know, modern design, center gravity a little bit farther back and how that changes here. But we got G10 now. I was going to say uh, off the toe a little bit there. That was a good ball. A lot of spin there. Two of them in a row. Some decent spin. Yeah. Eh. That might drop spin. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So the G10, any, any difference between G5 and G10, Jackie? Yeah, G10 definitely felt better. Um, even I didn't hit it particularly great on any of those, but it still like absorbed it a little bit better than the G5. Mm -hmm. So definitely seeing the technology get a little bit more forgiving as we sure go up. So I also noticed we did already see a little bit of that launch improve a little bit on you. Um, spin went up as well, so that actually added carry distance for you, but also total distance went down. So a couple of things to note. I mean that yeah, you were hitting that G5 45 feet in the air, so. Yeah, this has a little bit more loft too, just to note, 15 and a half. So oh, it is, okay. Yeah, that so might play a factor here. Okay, that um, is worth noting. But I think, I mean, I, I've seen you at three woods before. Yeah. You? And 45 feet is pretty low. So I think there is something yeah. to the center of gravity and the G5 being very forward compared to some of these we're going to hit. But I think we saw that difference start to emerge here already. But how about moving on to G30? I was going to say off the toe just a little bit too. Oh, that works though. Look at that. There we go. That was the highest ball speed so far. Be all right. All right, G30. 
Once upon a time, I had a G30 LST driver in the bag. Um, we're looking at the purple circle. We're kind of seeing some wide ovals here a little bit. Again, yeah. this is not the biggest sample size. But um, one thing we noticed, ball speed jumped up quite a bit. And we also noticed match factor. No went up. We also noticed, I thought I saw height. Well, a little bit up on height. But I think the consistency here also is worth noting that everything was more consistent with G30. Yeah. It's about carry distance, spin, you know, launch angle, smash factor. I mean, it was ball speed all more consistent with the G30. So that's something to take away. Again, we've, we've done a few of these um, fairy wood comparisons kind of over the last couple of decades or so. Always see that consistency go up. Or I guess the consistency deviation numbers anyway on TrackMan actually get smaller, but showing more consistency. Yeah, when you get to the um, you know G25, G30, the the actual head itself is much wider. So yeah. like just bigger in general from even the G10 and the G5, right? So those heads are a little bit more like rounded yeah. and not as big. Bringing some more weight behind the club face. Well, and this is where they started to really flatten out the bottoms of their clubs. So mm -hmm. the forgiveness and the higher MOI start to really come into play with these faces uh, as we get into the newer technology too. So not surprised by that result at all. Yeah, and one thing to note too, so you had mentioned that that is, so we had 15 and a half degrees on the G10, right? And this is 14 and a half on the, the G30. Yep. More height yeah. on uh, the G30. And then if I go to a launch angle, still only half a degree behind or yep. lower, I guess. So. Interesting to note there that it was still launching and generating plenty of spin to get the ball out there. So, all right, G410 now, one of the more new uh, models here. More ball speed improvements. Holy snakies. Yeah, a lot of spin there. A lot of spin. Was that a low? Uh, oh, yeah, a low heel maybe on that. It's still the highest ball speed though. Man. That was a good ball. There we go. So G410, Jackie, uh, one thing I didn't even ask you about the G30 was the turbulators on the crown. Yeah. Uh, did, do you, are you a fan of those? And do you notice them a lot or is that, is it kind of secondary? No, I mean the matte black kind of. I like the matte black. Yeah, I, I like the look of them for sure. They look, they look cool, you know. Um, like a spaceship. I don't yeah, know. I mean, there but, is a little bit of that element to it. But yeah, I mean, um, yeah, they definitely, once they got to the G30, they started to um, use those turbulators mm -hmm. and, you know, the matte black and yeah, it's you saw that with G since. and, mm -hmm, and yeah. G400. Um, another increase again, ball speed up to 125 now at G410. And uh, distance also 188 carry, which you've already gained now back to G5 and G10, you've gained 15 carry yards. And the height is still staying there, so you're not losing any of that. Yep. So, I mean, and you're spinning a little bit faster. You know, again, smash factor's up 148. So, efficient club, and then we see that dispersion tighten a little bit here, too. So, all right. Good numbers from G410. Now we get to the newest of the new from Ping, G425 Max. That just sounds so loud. That is smoked. Yeah, that one felt good. Very nice. Well, you had a little bit of a left tendency here, Jackie, with the G425 Max. Which we know, me and Ping tend to go left. That's true. You have said that before in, yeah. in videos. Um, but let's look at this information here. Another slight increase in ball speed. Again, I mean, G410 to G425 Max is just one generation. Yeah. So in theory, you shouldn't see a ton of difference um, between them. But I think it's worth noting, you did get more, three more carry yards, four and a half more total yards with the G425 Max. And you, didn't, you only lost one foot despite the fact that you were hitting it kind of more left, which yep. usually kind of means you drop some height on that thing. But uh, give me your thoughts on that feel and also how that looks kind of because they then removed the turbulators from the Fairy Woods in G425. Yeah, I, I personally like the G425 look the best out of all the models. Mm -hmm. Just because, 
I mean, it's just more sleek, mm -hmm. personally. Um, but yeah, the feel of it, the, well, first of all, the sound is actually like noticeably different. Yeah. It's definitely got like this very loud pop to mm -hmm. it, but the feel is, I mean, out of all the other models, the best. Yeah. Um, and I wouldn't even say I hit it necessarily the best. I think I hit the G410 a little bit better, like contact wise, just from feel. Consistency, yeah. Yeah, and um, so, but even given the fact that I didn't hit the G425 the best, like the, I didn't put the best swings on it, I mean, I'm still in the fairway, I'm still yeah. out there, and I mean, that has a lot to do with the, you know, forgiveness of this club. Right. But yeah, with ping, for me, I have to flatten them out a little bit just to, you know, if I were to flatten it out, I know that it would definitely be straighter and probably a little bit farther, but that's just a fitting component to, yeah. that is right. worth we're, noting in, in what is. you get. I mean, there, and that does happen, right? There's, there's, you know, with players, it could be due to the look, it could be just the kind of the, the different swing weighting elements of the club. I know we've talked about ping and how they have kind of the counterbalance yeah. um, effect with the drivers especially. Um, but there is something that does happen with people in certain brands. They miss one way or maybe it's more one way than the other. And that you have a tendency, it appears, with yeah. ping. But um, just looking at the numbers, we'll go through here fastest you get I mean that we've seen that too you swing faster with newer equipment could be due to uh, weight in the shaft could be due to the aerodynamics of the club head could be due to just the overall swing weighting of the club but uh, increasing that swing speed over time is another way that manufacturers have improved technology and improved performance ball speed again it's a pretty you know straight line improvement overall the newest stuff with the highest ball speed same with smash factor here G410 and G425 are the highest. Launch angle was one I thought we would see some trends emerge. And we really, I mean, didn't really see a trend. Yeah. You know, G5, G5 was launching really low. I thought, I, I mean, I thought the others would be higher than that, which they were, but I thought it would be kind of an incremental increase over time. Yeah. And part of that could be the fact that G10 did have 15 and a half degrees aloft, whereas the others were, uh, actually after that, were 14 and a half. Well, and you know, with the other clubs, I was definitely going more left. So that has a factor in the launch sure. angle for sure. So, you know, I was hitting, if you go mm -hmm. back to the dispersion circle. Um, oh, that's not dispersion circle. That's dispersion circle. If you go back to that, yeah. I mean, the G, technically G5, G10, I was hitting probably the straightest, you know. Mm -hmm. So as I went up in technology, I tend to, you know, pull it a little more. Well, it makes sense though, because as newer technology has gone, and there's a lot more, you know, there, not a lot more, but there is some offset to these clubs, yeah. especially in ping. So that's where, like, you know, when you're talking about technology, um, you know, even though I wasn't necessarily striking them the best, I'm still getting more, like, better results. Right. And with ping, the best thing is, like, you go to, like, the G25 or G30, and even the G400, we didn't test that, but the G400 and G410 are very similar. But they're really like high quality clubs for you know especially now half the price especially now yeah. as you know uh we have uh, we have a bunch of those here at second swing but they've been really good performance a lot of good feedback for people that do come in for the used fittings yeah um looking for a fairy wood not trying to spend top dollar for g425 yeah uh just a note on spin you know you got more spin as you kind of went up no it's g5 with, again that lower launch and that low spin uh i think that center of gravity was just way forward compared to these other models here um, and then you get up to that point where there was a time in golf, like you wanted more spin out of your woods. And then they've kind of sensed it's been like, all right, we're going to make, you know, have spin go down so that ball can fly farther and roll out. But there was a time when the ball was launching too low, which perhaps went in the G5 when you actually needed more spin to keep the ball in the air. Um, and then carry distance, you actually gained basically almost 18 yards with just, you know, hitting three woods here and then total, you know, gained 13 yards. So. Some big gains here over the years from paying, which again, we do this every time we see the same thing. It's going to be, you know, 10 to 20 more yards. Yeah. Um, if, uh, if you give, you know, over 15 to 20 years technology, you gain that much distance, um, even though height really didn't change at all here besides the G5. Yeah. So, I mean, Ping's always, they've done some great stuff. Now they got some consistency on that G425 series, Fairy Woods. They've kind of modified the face a little bit to improve those low strikes, which is another key element of Fairy Woods. But... Uh, obviously, really good stuff here from Ping, and again, like you said right at the beginning, they've always been a leader in forgiveness with golf clubs. 
Yeah, for sure. I would say, you know, especially in 2021, the leader in fairway woods and paying is up there, if not the top yeah. one. I mean, it just, you get a lot of forgiveness, especially if you're a mid to higher handicap uh, and need a good fairway wood and struggle with the fairway woods. Paying is always going to be a go-to for us as fitters just because mm -hmm. of the, you know, the results we see from them. Right. I mean, they, they speak for themselves and they, they show that result uh, in here and on the golf course. So uh, ping is a great option if you're looking to hit more fairways and, and hit more greens. It's going to be one of the best. Yeah, I, I agree. And I mean, I got G425 LST in my bag and I've loved it this year. So um, I can attest to that. But golfers, if you are in the market for a new fairy wood, a new three wood, uh, any of these ping options would be pretty darn good. Obviously, price-wise, they're going to vary, and performance-wise, they're going to vary, as we saw here today. But whatever works best for you and your budget, we can help you get set up with the right fit, the right shaft, the right lie angle here at Second Swing, whether it's in-store or whether you talk to one of our um, online fitting and support team members. So, Jackie, thank you for joining today, providing us with your insight and with uh, all the data up there. Um, you know, I think golfers really like this one. Yeah, thanks for having me.